We're after a pay-per-view, so you know it's going to be a good one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the some more raw thoughts after a break of what three weeks we are back here. And I know I only did it for 24 hours ago, but believe it or not, my abscess that I have down here has shrunk quite considerably in that time. Now, if you saw my Hell in a Cell review thoughts vid thing, you'll have meant you'll heard me mention that I've got a competition coming up. Yeah? Nice and simple competition. First prize in this competition will be a brand new copy of the WWE 2K14 video game for the Xbox. Second prize will be a t-shirt and a third prize will be a key ring. I might throw some more wrestling related stuff in there as well. Might throw some Brit Rest DVDs in to be honest as well. That can be a good little prize to have, wouldn't it? So, how do I go about entering this competition? I can hear you cry. It's nice and simple. Do you know how simple it is? All you need to do is drop me a comment down below. I will put all the people who comment into a hat. I will draw them out in a vid in a couple of days' time. I must stress, though, this competition is limited to the UK only. Why? It's simple as this, because the version of the game I'm going to get is a, is a PAL game, so it wouldn't work on an American system. It's that, it's that simple. It's not and I'm not being a cunt. I'm not, you know, it's, not, it's not like it's a ridiculously expensive piece of poster game over to America. It's just that if I did that, you wouldn't be able to play the game. So I'm afraid that United Kingdom only, okay, guys? So it's nice and simple. Let me know what you thought of Raw, or, if you like, just put a completely random comment down below. Tell me how much you like fish paste, if it pleases you. I don't care what the comment is. Just drop me a comment down below. How's that sound? So, raw. Raw, raw, raw. As we all know, Hell in a Cell was shite. You know, not a very good pay-per-view at all. It says a lot when you watch TNA Bound for Glory, and that pay-per-view is better than this one, than Hell in a Cell. And Bound for Glory was rubbish. Don't get me, no, don't get me wrong. So, tonight we have Shawn Michaels here to explain himself about last night. We'll have Orton's victory celebration, and I get to pick the stipulation of CM Punk versus Ryback on my WWE app. I can choose between a street fight, a tables match, or a falls count anywhere match. Who fucking Ray? Can I just have a make this match not happen, please, match? Because, yeah, I don't give a shit about right? But Anyway, so John Cena's out first. He's back. He thanks JBL for motivating him. And he's the World Heavyweight Champion. He shouts that twice. And he's got to ice his arm. He tells ADR to come get some. But here's Sandow. He says that Cena is afraid that he will cash in on him. He teases cashing in on him. And then beats the shit out of Cena in one of those things that I really like Cena. Oh, really? He really goes to work. This is Wrestling 101. Work the injured body part, yeah? Launches him in, in with the briefcase. Uh, sorry, look, hits him with the briefcase. Then throws him into the ring post. Then into the barricade. And then into the steps. And then a chair bashes the arm with the chair on the steps. That's great storytelling right there. And, um, yeah, then he cashes in. But in one of those... Well, that's is really bizarre. We then go to commercial break. So Cena's got two whole minutes, or maybe even three minutes, to recover, which is a bit odd. But when we come back, match has started. Cena sells the arm so much more than at Hell in a Cell. So, be so much better. And it's one of those things, remember I said on my Hell in a Cell review, I said on my predictions as well, Cena needs to sell to get convey how important, how much the arm is still injured. And the thing is, I mean, at Hell in a Cell, the announcers did it, but Cena didn't really bother. In this, though, Cena's... Oh, it's fantastic. His selling was fantastic. The crowd were hot. Cena has put... You see, Cena does little things, like putting the STF on with one arm, so it's easy for Sandow to escape out of it. Little touches like that are so underappreciated, in my opinion. Um... Yeah, uh, a crippled crossface, for example, by Sandow. Remember what I said in the past, that works both the arm and the neck. Great little bit of psychology, that is. Your welcome gets a, a great near fall, as the fans chant, this is awesome. But uh, an attitude adjustment gets the win for Cena. I bet there's so many people out there who are proper pissed off about this. Yeah, I mean, I admit, for, I'm the first to admit, I would have much preferred Sandow to win here. But at the same time, I was so engrossed in the match that at this moment in time, I actually don't give a fuck about that. I know... I go on about psychology and storytelling in wrestling a lot. This match proved it beyond a shadow of a doubt how much it matters. 
in wrestling. You can take what on paper could only be an all right match, add in the commentators bigging up the injured body part, yeah, and then you've got Cena bothering to sell it, proper dangle job and everything, and of course Sandow cont continuously working on it, and it tells a great story that sucks you in. I would take a match like this over a TLC match, a fucking Inferno match, any sort of stipulation or gimmick match or weapon shots and all that. Give me storytelling like this any day. That's a bit of a brand. There we go. Um, Biggie Lanson defeated Dean Ambrose via disqualification when the Shield attacked him. And um, the Shield went to give him out of more beats. But then Usos make the save. Out comes Brad Maddox and does his best Teddy Long impression. Makes it a three on three. Um, match is okay. Usos hits stereo super kicks on Rollins. But then Reigns hits a double spear to pick up the win. And why not? Shawn Michaels comes out to explain himself. He calls, Bri he calls out Brian as the fans chant, you sold out at him. He did what he did because Brian attacked his best friend Hunter, you know, the one he spent a year feuding with back in 2003-04. Uh, anyway, he doesn't want Brian to understand, he just wants Brian to accept his apology. Last night he took Brian to finishing school. Brian won't accept the apology. Shawn Michaels gives us a tiny little bit of heel, Shawn, calls him a little puke, yada yada yada. I'm Shawn Michaels, I do deserve respect. Brian responds, and as only he can, I suppose, puts the yes lock on, the fans go mental. Brian was getting cheered here, and you've got Shawn Michaels in the ring, who's a legend and a Hall of Famer, and Brian's getting more cheers than him. Good shit. That's what I like. And then in the back, Brian is about to be interviewed by Renny Young, but her fucking Wyatt family vision comes on. She runs away. Brian's looking around, what the fuck's happening? And then the Wyatt family attack, give him an absolute better in. Uh, Sister Abigail uh, into the into the wall or the cupboard or something they've got there looks amazing and then bray wyatt says the devil made me do it which is an interesting thing to say i mean who's the devil vince mcmahon was always called satan himself wasn't he you know that's an interesting one 3mb versus lost matadors Sl he later comes out with a fucking bull uh net that was hilarious um chases el torito under the ringway gets sprayed with a fire extinguisher and then hit with a gore the matadors pick up the win then torito hits a nice double spring load elbow uh, onto Heath Slater. Comedy match, but it was short and there was nothing bad in it. Then, oh, oh man, Cole shows us how to download the WWE app, yeah? Like he's talking to a five-year-old. He talks, he, he explains it the way that I once explained to my nan how to use a DVD player. In, you know, like, like you're talking to them like they're an idiot. You know, that sort of thing. Does that make sense? Then a Divas match happened. Uh, AJ won with a Black Widow. And we're told it's Miz versus Kane next. Hooray. Interestingly, indifference for both men. Uh, what I love about this one, of course, is that Miz does just gets owned. Chokeslam gets the win for Kane. Then something very strange happens. As Kane gets on the mic and calls out Steph. Steph comes out. And, you know, Kane sort of starts going off on one. You've been abusing your power. Yada, yada, yada. And then he just stops and goes, but good for you know, it's good for business. And you're like, okay. He says, the mon the, yeah, this monster's been unleashed and you can do whatever you want with him. And you're like, okay. He walks up the ramp, takes his mask off and gives it to Steph and walks away. Like, okay. Bizarre, but intriguing. Don't mind seeing where that one goes. The primetime player, Shill Merchandise, David Otunga, still has a job. Can you believe that? I haven't seen him for months. Um, he talks about Big Show's lawsuit that he's brought against the uh, Hunter and Steph and how, um, and how yeah, if it, if it goes down, he will, it will cost the Triple H millions. And then here comes Punk, talks about beating up Paul Heyman last night. He says, Ryback is nothing without Heyman. He can't wait to see what I voted for on the WWE app. Of course, I voted for a street fight. And Punk wins this one very, very easily. A, a, a um, macho elbow through a table. And, and I'm kind of about to get Ryback to tap out, which is hilarious. But then the Wyatt family come out and they demolish Punk. And Bray says, the devil made me do it. Interesting. Are we going to see, see uh, Wyatt's versus Punk and Brian? Or are they thinking towards Survivor Series? A five on five? You know, it's all good. In in once again, it's that intrigue of who's the devil when he says it. Real Americans defeated the Rose Brothers in a good match. You know, classic tag team wrestling match. Cody is your Rose is in peril. Uh, Goldust gets the hot tag. Cleans house. Hits that beautiful power slam. But it's actually the Patriot lock that forces Goldust to tap out. Could be an interesting feud going ahead. Uh, Alberto Del Rio comes out. He says that because Cena won, he gets a rematch with uh, Cena. And he's gonna, he vows to break Cena's arm. And then Natalia defeated Summer Rae. Summer Rae, Michael Cole claimed it's her first singles match. It's like all those ones on NXT just didn't count then, did they? And of course, obviously, because it's her first single match, she lost to a sharpshooter. Ha <laughs> ha, shit. Um, 
But that was our main event, believe it or not, because, of course, Aunt Orton's uh, title celebration hasn't happened, and this is the last match of the night. That, ladies and gentlemen, Natalia versus Summer Rae was our main event. Aren't we lucky? In the main event, in the actual main event spot, all the roster could have come out around the ramp. Stephanie Triple H comes out. Hunter Pets El Torito as he comes out. What a dick. <laughs> Hunter talks up Orton. He talks about how he made him part of evolution, yada, yada, yada. And Steph, uh, Orton comes out. Steph says that Orton is everyone's champ and asks the, sh or the roster to show Orton some respect. Orton says he's better than all the roster, which is a great way to earn your respect. But here comes Big Show, complete with entrance music, which is a bit strange. Um, big bro with Cody, Goldust, Usos taking out the shield. Show gets on the mic as uh, Orton and Steph and Triple H run away. Basically says that he, um, the lawsuit's going to cost them millions and he has got nothing to lose, which is why he's out here. And now, I should point out that there was a restraining order against Big Show, and I'm sure breaking your restraining order is a great way to get inside the jury's, you know, good good point, good in their, into, into their good into their hearts when they're you know, deciding on a lawsuit. But yeah, that's that's by and by, isn't it? Anyway, the point is that um, he's attacked by Orton with the belt, but Big Show hits Orton with the KO punch, Triple H is like, Rrr! takes his jacket off, takes his tie, and then backs down, and that is what closes the show. Interesting, eh? So, what I'll say about this, I mean, it wasn't the greatest roar I've ever seen, but it's certainly a decent episode. I'm glad I, let's put it this way, I'm glad I watched it. It didn't feel like three hours. That might be because I was, I was doing my classic two, you know, eye on each thing, playing on my Xbox and watching Raw at the same time, so I was sort of keeping myself occupied. But even with the ad breaks, it didn't feel like a three-hour show. I enjoyed this Raw. I bet there's so many people out there who are so pissed off, especially about that opening segment. But yeah. I enjoyed this one. Like I say, glad I watched it because I wasn't going to watch this one. I was thinking, I've gen I said on my Hell in a Cell thoughts, you know, I probably won't watch Raw again this year just because I can't be bothered and I'll get back into the swing of it at Rumble. But, you know, no, no, no. I'm going to keep going because uh, you guys like it. So, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, do me this big favour. Hit me a comment down here. I don't actually care what it is. Tell me what you, I, obviously I prefer it and it makes more, more sense in the context of the video if it's about what you thought of Raw or what you think about the storylines going on. Hell, Tell me who you think is going to win the Royal Rumble, if you like. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Um, and so, yeah, that's that. Ladies and gentlemen, my next vid will be a uh, 97th Heaven episode. Uh, I'm going to do Bad Blood 97, which, of course, has got the first ever Hell in a Cell match. Just want to say one more thing before I go, and that is a happy birthday to my friend Dave Rain. It's his birthday today. And, uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Mark P. Hit like, hit subscribe if you haven't already. Hit me a comment. It, it could win you a DVD, literally. I mean, not a DVD, a game. A brand new wrestling game. Yeah, that I've played that, you know, for free. All you need to do, write a comment saying, I like chips. That could potentially win you a game. How fantastic is that? You can't go wrong, can you? Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Mark P. Thank you very much for watching and see you and goodbye. Goodbye.